Shabbat Shalom. Praise y'all for you all. Uh, join us again for this Shabbat. Hallelujah. So Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Say everyone. So this is part two of our lesson of how we should um, walk as the sons of Yah. Uh, part two. So praise Yah for his for his, his compassion and for his word. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off again with another uh, with, 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 with a word of prayer, and then we're gonna uh, dive right on into the scriptures. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Almighty Yahweh, we thank you for your compassion. Thank you today for your loving kindness. And thank you for your truth, Almighty Yahweh. We magnify you. We just we just give you the esteem and the honor right now for being our salvation. Thank you, Almighty Yahweh, for this, this day as well, this Shabbat day, for this day that you have made. And we're going to rejoice, continue rejoicing this day. I ask you, Almighty Yahweh, that you will help all of us to grow in our faith as your word goes forth. That you truly be the one that's getting all the esteem. That you lead myself those who are with me by the Ruach HaKodesh, help me to be able to speak whatever you desire for me to speak, and not my own my own words, my own feelings, my own heart, but help me to speak your truth, and your truth from your, your words of wisdom with love. Let deliverance take place, salvation, breakthrough. Let the anointing destroy every yoke. Let your will be done. We thank you, and we just magnify you. We ask you for healing, for those who need to be healed, for breakthrough, for deliverance. I just ask you to be Yahuwah in our life, and help us to walk by our fear. And excuse by faith and not by fear. We thank you. We just magnify you. In the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. So praise y'all. Uh, I know it's like I got on sunglasses, um, but these are actually not sunglasses. These are actually my real glasses, uh, but they came wrong. So we're going to use this today temporarily because uh, I, can, I can see out of them until I, uh, my new ones come in the mail. <laughs> so these are not sunglasses. These are actually prescription glasses. Then uh, we just got, the, they supposed to send some transitional lenses, and they just sent them to be solid black. So, um, <laughs> we will most definitely get some more. Because my other ones are broken, so they keep falling off when I talk. <laughs> so, I got to do something. So, praise y'all. So, anyway, this is part two of uh, of uh, um, our message, how, how we should walk as the sons of y'all. And so, today, our foundation of scriptures are going to be... Uh, well, not our financial scripture, but our scripture we're going to use today is going to be Galatians chapter number 5. We're going to begin at verse 13 uh, through um, um, the whole, the whole uh, to, to the end of the chapter. And also, we, also we're going to use uh, Colossians uh, chapter number 3. And we're going to begin at verse 1 until, until the Most High sees for us, sees, uh, for us to um, stop. But until then, it'll be verse 10 unless he causes us to go forward. And of course, Genesis 2, uh, in, in the Torah especially. Uh, so praise y'all for his compassion. Now listen, uh, th this, this is a serious question that's being asked by everyone, you know, by, by us. I believe it's a question, I believe it's a question at the most high would desire for us to be able to um to um to ask. I think he's asking the question. You know, and the question again is, you know, you know, how how or, or is is how we should walk or how should we walk? As the sons of Yah, and for those of us who are the sons of Yah, we should walk by the Spirit. But you know, um, we need to learn what that is. First, I'm gonna get my, my my helper, my reader, uh, Isaiah, to read for me, beginning in Galatians uh, chapter five, beginning at verse thirteen, and read read until verse um, uh, until the end of twenty one. Praise Yah. Okay. Galatians chapter five, verse thirteen. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For the Torah is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Hold on, he said, brother, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty or unto freedom. To liberty, only don't use that freedom or that liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Amen. Uh, but by love serve one another. Go ahead. Uh, for all the Torah is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the Torah, all of the Torah is fulfilled in one word. What's that word? Love. Love. Mm. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, I stopped it. I want to say this because, listen, how we should walk as, as, as the sons of Yah is by the Ruach and the, the, the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. And we know that the truth is Yah's word, which is a Torah. But the, and, and, and that shows us, shows, us, shows us how to love Yah 
You know, and how to love our brethren. So now, listen to this now. When the adversary tells you that you don't have to follow the law, you don't under the law of the Torah, he's trying to get you from love. Now, I heard, I heard a man say this one time. He says that we're, not, that we're redeemed from the curse of the law, and he says so we're, we're convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, first of all, that's stupid and it's a lie. You, 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 the, the curse of the law that you're redeemed from is not Yah's word. The curse of the law that you're redeemed from is death. So death is the curse of the law that you're no longer under. Right. Not the most highest word. It's death. And you're convicted by the Holy Spirit from the word of Yah. Not the Holy Spirit that's saying you're wrong for that. No. That's why you got so many religious-minded people who don't know Yah's word. So they make up phrases. Now, I don't do this. I, I, I don't do some of these things and, I, and I'm not trying to defend them, but I gotta tell the truth about them. It's just like in times past when people said, you know, pe people they used they used to say smoking cigarettes is a sin. Well, I don't smoke cigarettes, but smoking cigarettes is not gonna get you to sit to hell. And the scripture and the scripture don't allude to smoking cigarettes being a sin. That's religion. The same, the same religion says you can't drink. So then you got some folks don't want to drink wine because they feel they're going to hell and if someone else drink wine, you in sin. Or you can't go to a restaurant or you can't go out to, uh, to enjoy your spouse to listen to other kind of music. I'm not saying the club. I don't go to clubs. Not at all. I haven't been to the club since the 1990s and I want a big club going then. But to take my wife to a restaurant where they may have some soft music in the background. They may be playing a little jazz in the background. It ain't no sin to go to a restaurant while they're playing jazz in the background. They ain't going to always be in the background playing, saying, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord. And while you and your wife sit back eating a steak, you know, or some chicken, you know, drinking a glass of wine. But because of religion and because of man-made tradition, it makes y'all's word ineffective and we believe things are scripture that are not scripture. And so then, so then, therefore, when scripture is given to us, it's foreign to us, mm -hmm. we get mad about it. Why? Because we have no understanding of what scripture is. So we're going to talk, we're going to give scripture. And I'm telling you all today, go reread your Bibles. You got a Bible. You got bookstores around here. You got, you, you got books a million. You got these so-called Christian bookstores. You got Amazon. You got all kind of other stores online that actually sell Bibles. And what I advise everyone to do is go pick you a Bible up and read your Bible for yourself. Amen. Start from the beginning and read it for yourself. And now, and, th and then there is nothing wrong with challenging anybody who teaches the word of Yah. Myself or anyone else that teaches you the word of Yah we should be able to defend what we're saying. We should be able to go to the scripture and read to you what we're saying. And if we can't read to you the scripture and show you then our advice, where's the wisdom? Stop following me or anybody that cannot show you in the Bible what they're talking about. That's a bad teacher. I would say I would always say they're a false teacher because you got some folks that's just ignorant, but I would say it's a bad teacher who should sit down until they've learned better to be able to teach the right thing. Because the Most High called you to be a shepherd. He called you to be a pastor. The job of a pastor is to feed God's people with knowledge and instruction. Now listen to this. If you don't know how to feed the Most High, them the Most High's word, then pray and ask Yah to give you a wise and an understanding heart, to give you a spirit of discernment, to help you be able to teach. Or you might want to check your calling to see if he called you to do it in the first place. Because we don't have time to be misleading people because of our own emotions, our own feelings. This is a true responsibility. So again, verse uh, 14 of Galatians uh, 5 says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, so, so the law is the Torah is fulfilled through love. That's what they're saying. Verse 15 says, But if you bite and devour one another, 
take heed, you be not consumed one of another. So, but if you bite and devour one another, bite, being mean, talking crazy to one another, killing one another, bashing each other, putting down one another, take heed that you be not consumed one, that you be not consumed one of another, that you don't hurt each other, kill each other, destroy one another because you don't love each other. That's amazing, ain't it? The foundation. So, so just to read a little bit of these three verses, the Apostle Paul, Shaul, was not going against Torah. He's teaching Torah. Matter of fact, Leviticus 18 is probably where he had, excuse me, Leviticus is probably where he had about love and not bearing a grudge. Huh? Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. It's, it's, they, they look like Torah right there. Yeah. You know, so, so, and, and I'm, 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 yeah, I am. I'm trying to bash the devil. I'm not trying to pay bash people, but I am bashing the devil, and I, and I am coming against bad teaching. Because I hear some of these weak, ignorant leaders get on here and bash the scripture. Mm -hmm. Hebrews is who I'm talking to, and I'm talking about. So today we're talking about Hebrews. I'm not talking about Gentiles, I'm not talking about the Christian church, I'm talking about Israelites who get on here bashing folks coming in because we, we think we can come out and sound good and give a little hot with ourselves and sound sincere like we're telling the truth. No, you still be dead wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounding sincere, full of passion. So you can't ever let, 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 let your passions override reasoning. You should never let your emotions cloud your sound judgment. You should always be sound in your teaching. No matter how passionate you want to get. Start at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the what? Spirit. And walk in the what? Spirit. In the spirit. In, 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 in the spirit. In the, in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How do you walk in the spirit? By faith. Mm -hmm. And we'll get that in a minute. Go ahead, verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Okay, let's stop. So we can get a, get get an understanding of, of the, these couple of verses. We'll give an example because the the, the, the spirit, it, he, he he said the flesh, the flesh lust of out, out, after the what? Spirit. The spirit. So the flesh lust of after the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And the spirit after the flesh. Right. So the spirit, the flesh want to be in control, and the spirit want to be in control. You gotta be able to decide on, excuse me, decide on who you want to have control over you. It says for it says for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit um, um, against the flesh. Right, yeah. and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one uh, to, to 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 one the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Let me give you a good example of the spirit and the flesh. Colliding on another. Genesis 2. Um, Genesis 2. Um, verse. Um, let's go back to my. No. Genesis 2. Verse 17. Excuse me. Verse 16. Well, I'm sorry. Verse 15. Genesis 2. Verse 15 says this. And Yahuwah Elohim took the man. Took the man. I know not like these glasses, but I, <laughs> I can see how I'm good. And Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. Right? right. Here's the spirit talking to a man. And Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. This is a spirit. This is a spirit talking to your spirit. This is, this is a spirit talking to your carnal mind. Before man had fallen. Mm -hmm. This is a spirit talking to the whole man. He gave man a commandment. Don't eat from this tree. Right? Mm -hmm. you, can have a, you, you can you can you of every tree in the garden you can eat freely from. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely do what? Die. Die. That's the spirit talking to the man. To give man life. Right? Mm -hmm. Here's the flesh. This is just my example. 
Here's the flesh. Now, this is Genesis 3 and 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle. This word is subtle. Uh, it's, the, it, it's the Hebrew word, arum. It means to be crafty, means to be prudent, means to be cunning. Now, the serpent was more cunning, more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah, Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, to the woman, yea, half Elohim said, uh, that you, you you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Now he answers this question. He answered this question, and a woman said to the serpent, "We may eat. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, uh, Yahuwah Elohim has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it." So the, the, the adversary comes in to tempt the woman flesh to see if she gonna disobey the ruach, the spirit. The commandment of Yah that was given to her from her husband from Yah. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the, Adam told Eve. Yah told Adam. She was not there. She was still in Adam when, when Yah spoke. That's why I say he spoke to the woman. And her husband told her. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it lest she die. Now she, 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 she spoke with the Spirit and said, don't eat from the tree. She may have added her own word. She may have said something Adam said. Adam might have said, don't touch it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe she was lying on Yah. I believe she was speaking the truth. Don't eat from this tree. And Adam probably said, don't touch it. The word does not indicate that she lied. So I'm not going to put words, add to the word. But she said this, and the serpent said to the woman, ye shall not surely die. This is the flesh. The flesh won. Mm -hmm. Because verse 6 says this, and the woman saw, and the woman saw, she did what? Saw. She saw with her flesh. She didn't see by faith. This time she saw with her eyes. Mm -hmm. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was pleasing to the what? Eyes. To the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one what? Wise. Wise. And she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did do what? Eat. So now, the flesh and the ruach lust against one another. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. These two told the woman, told Adam, some different. It was Adam's responsibility to walk by faith. Walking by the spirit is walking by what? Faith. Not by what? Sight. Sight. The adversary has lied to us, telling us, well, you know, you know, God gave you common sisters, so we live by our sisters now? <laughs> you live by how you feel? You live by what you see? Your five sisters, taste, touch, smell, mm -hmm. hearing, seeing, right? Mm -hmm. That's not how you're supposed to live your life. The most high didn't give you that to rule you. He gave you your spirit to rule you. Your flesh, going by your, 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 your common sense, gratifies the flesh, and you're going by how it looks instead of what Yah says. Right. See, Adam and Eve in the garden, Adam had no faith. The Most High spoke to Adam. Don't eat from this tree. You know, because Adam never died, don't mean he had to die. If he had no understanding of what death was, he should have asked. The adversary deceived Adam. He see, deceived Eve. The, the most high said the tree produce, produces what? Death. The adversary said it don't. When Adam, when, when adversary got, got finished dealing with Eve, the flesh won. So how should you walk? How should we walk as, as the children of Yah? We, we most definitely should not walk by the flesh. Right. By the spirit. 
Verse 18, I'm going I'm to read it and I'm going to explain. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. It, that is not saying, let me just get a better version. That's not saying that the law is done away with. It's not saying that you that um you ain't gonna do the law. It's actually saying it says, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not bound by the rule of the spirit, the law of the flesh. And also, that if you are led by the spirit, then the law is not against the spirit. It's not saying you ain't gotta follow the law. And some and, 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 and some of us people, some of us teachers, be, ha, have been teaching this wrong for a long time. And, and, and folks come around and can't and can't even understand understand what it's saying, and they either give up or say anything to replace that. Well, you know, we ain't got to follow law, or, or, or they try to avoid right. trying to explain that. But you, but 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 it's just simply saying that that uh, the law is out against. Those who are led by the Spirit, and you, or, 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 or and somebody, when you see this, it says you're not under the law of sin and death. If you read the entire chapter instead of that one verse, praise y'all. So now, verse 19, read loud. Hallelujah. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have uh, told you, also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so it says, it says, now the works of the of, of, of a flesh, your flesh. Let me give you a better understanding for those who grew up in tradition. Mm -hmm. So you won't think flesh. So you won't think when I say flesh, I'm talking about my skin. <laughs> Your flesh, I'm talking about your old nature. The old man. Before Mashiach, if you say you were saved. And my reason for saying this is this right here. Because those who don't have salvation have no clue and they are in the flesh. That's what they live by. They don't have know how to get in the Ruach and go after They don't have Yah. But those of us who say we have Yah we should stop doing this. And that's the problem. It's your carnal mindset. Your old nature. So Paul is talking to believers. He's not talking to those who don't know y'all. So today I'm talking to the believers. Israel. Those who say they know y'all. Saying that works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. And we got to bring this out because I've seen pastors, preachers and teachers, those who say they're in the truth, straight adulteries, in their heart, emotional affairs with other men's wives, emotional affairs with other women, and they're married. Other people See another woman or another man knowing better, but still choose to commit adultery. Or still choose to be a fornicator and continue to make up excuses of, they, of them not being able to help themselves. And I disagree with that. I I stand on this right here. And, and we, we, you can challenge me, anybody. I don't believe that if we come to y'all sincerely by faith, that he'll turn us away and we have the same problem. I believe that the Most High does not despise a broken heart or a contrite spirit. And I believe that if we go to y'all sincerely and ask for deliverance of anything, that I believe that he'll deliver us. I believe he'll give us a strength to overcome that thing which is trying to hold us back. So we don't have to be fornication, fornicators. We don't have to walk unclean. We don't have to live, live a life of lasciviousness or idolatry or witchcraft. We don't have to hate people or walk in variance, variance uh, uh, of other people. This word variance, I hope you can see, I hope you can see my screen. This word variance 
on the TV. Uh, uh, it's the Greek word, iris, which means we don't have to walk uh, uh, in quarreling with people. Be in contentional strife with folks. We ain't got to walk in our pride. Think we tough. I'll whoop you down. I don't care about nobody. What's wrong with being meek? What's wrong with being humble? Why do we got to walk in pride? You know what I found out? Walking in pride, getting into with folks. Everybody that I got into, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about family members. People who I say I love, who I care about. My wife, my brothers, my children, people, you know, who I say I care about. I've, every time we get into it with one another, if we, if we love one another, then why we got to hold our head down can't even look at each other? I just over with them. We can't look at each other. Or why would we look, we look at one another? We cannot have to have a conversation without getting our voices raised. Threaten to slap somebody. Threaten to walk away from somebody. Threaten to cut somebody. Threaten to divorce somebody. I'm going to leave you alone. Threaten to just end friendships. And we all say we love y'all. But we say that varies with one another. We can't even get along with one another. It can't be true. We're fulfilling the lust of our flesh. And here we are. We get mad at one another. Walk away from one another. Can't humble ourselves. But then saying, y'all know my heart. Shame on you. We just read, we, 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 we just read at the beginning of the chapter, excuse me, at the, at, the, at the beginning of the lesson, when Paul says this right here, he said, for brethren, you have been called to freedom, to liberty. Only use not that liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but love one another. But by love, serve one another. But here we are, we, we, we can't even get, we, we, we can't even get along for real. I had a lady to attack me so hard last week, but she loved y'all. She lying. How can you love y'all who you ain't never seen, but hate your brother who met in the very image of y'all? It's amazing how we love the most high, but attack one another. You telling a lie. You can't love y'all and can't get along with each other. Can't get along with me. You can't love y'all and continue to struggle with fornication. I can understand if you're ignorant of something, but the most high don't want you to remain ignorant. As a matter of fact, what Paul said in Acts 17 chapter, in your spare time, read it. When he was on Mars Hill, he was talking to Eupicurus in the stores, and he, and, and he was saying, you know, you men of Athens, I see that you all are religious in every way. You are most superstitious. You are most religious in every way. And here you are getting your shines, your shines up. And here you are with a, with, 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 with a shine, a shrine, an altar built up, and you have inscribed on it to the unknown God. So I'm gonna make him known to you today. You know, then he began to talk about to who to who 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 y'all was to those people. And then he says, at one time in time past, he winked at your ignorance. But then he commands all men everywhere to Tashuva, to, to turn from that. So, so, so let me get you understand it. To repent. He ain't telling you to start saying, I'm, I'm, you, you, you start crying, say, I'm sorry. No, Ooh, I'm sorry. no. Stop living like this. Stop seeing a, 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 a God who you don't know and begin to know him. There's no, no sense for you to have a shrine inscribed to an unknown God who you don't know. Repent. Turn from that ignorance and begin to walk in righteousness. He commands all men everywhere to repent. And then, like he told, like he told the men on Mars Hill, I'm telling you, you Christians and some of you Hebrews, as even some of your own poets have said, it's in him you live. It's in him you move. It's in him you have your being. As even some of your own poets have said, you are his offspring. So then, therefore, if you are the offspring of Yah, why live a life contrary to the word of Yah? Why live a life of adultery or fornication? Why live a life of uncleanliness? Why would you want to live a life of sleeplessness? Why would you want to remain in idolatry? You know, I tell folks, I even said that at a funeral this past week, and I had a whole road walk out. I still don't care. I'm going to still tell the truth. Because, you know, my thing is this. Why would we tell people about idolatry? The first thing you do is get upset. Because your mama was a Baptist. Or because your grandmama was a Baptist. Or because your daddy was a deacon. 
It's funny how you know what? Come be real with you. At home, you saw Mama Them wrong. And you didn't always obey Mama Them. You know, you snuck and did things you shouldn't have done. You might not have had no big old sin, what you want to call it, but you got in the refrigerator when you was a kid and stole that juice. Mama told you don't get none. You cut that cake, Mama said don't get none. You, <coughs> you hit your brother, your brother or your sister, but Mama said don't hit them. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm good. You didn't do your chores. But mama them said you were disobedient at home. <clears throat> then you even at home saw mama and daddy doing things they should have done. Saying things they should have said to you, to each other, to other, other folks. So you know mama and daddy could be wrong. But when it comes down to this, they got to be right. They be wrong here too. I tell you, Baptist religion, Church of Christ religion, Church of God of Christ religion, any kind of Christian ancient religion, all of it is idolatry. None of it is uh, of the Bible. You can't go in the Bible nowhere and read the scripture in its entirety and find any of that mess in the scriptures. All of it is idolatry. But when somebody comes tell you it's idolatry, you get mad. You don't want to be around no more. But you ain't praying about it. You ain't got in your Bible about it. All you did was remain offended. <clears throat> Someone comes to you and tell you the truth, but under the Shabbat, you get offended. They tell you, don't eat that pork. It's unclean. You get mad. You rather stay in a state of uncleanliness. But 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 the thing is, when someone when, 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 when a man came to me, when someone came to me and told me, that we will still follow Torah. You know what I did? I started reading. I didn't grow up in church. No, I didn't. I was only a so-called Christian for maybe about 12, 13 years. But I believe everything them Christians told me. I believe a woman couldn't be no preacher. I believe you couldn't speak in tongues. I believe you couldn't lay hands on nobody. I believe this Sunday was a day we're supposed to eat. All unclean food, and I believe that dog gonna look here. I, I can pray on my food right now, and he gonna heal it. And I believe all that because somebody told me. I never one time read anywhere in the Bible where they said that I took it as face value. But when I begin to seek y'all and begin to cry out to y'all and want y'all to change my life, it was certain things that y'all required of me, and the first thing he required of me was to go to his Torah. And when I began to read the Torah about the Shabbat, I never saw anyone anywhere else in the scriptures going against that. I knew I was supposed to keep it all of a sudden. You, Christian Anthony want to tell you what he, because the Bible said on the first day of the week, when they saw him rose, he changed the day. That's a lie from the adversary himself, because the, 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 the most high sense of the Torah and the Shabbat, is a perpetual covenant, and then when perpetual covenant means continuous, ongoing, never ending. The most high will never ever tell you it's never ended and then ended. Right. But our problem is that as religious folks, we would rather stay in the same spot because we don't like the challenge. But if you want to inherit the kingdom of Yah, you have to rid yourself of the carnal mindset. You have to grow. Can't stay in the same place. Everybody getting, everybody thinking, you know, having on a brand new suit, smelling good with some good cologne and a nice watch on with your hair done and you're looking good, prosperous with your nice car and your house big and we think that's growth. That's not growth. That's you having more money based on where you work probably or on your own business. Growth is learn how to humble yourself, swallow your pride, get along with, with everyone and quit, learn, and quit loving, the, excuse me, and learn how to love the heart to love. Growth is being obedient to Yah's word, walking in it by faith, not worried about how anybody feels or what they're going to say to you. That's true growth. Now ask yourself your own question in the mirror in your spare time. Have you grown? And I don't mean grown wide in your body because your stomach fat from the weight you gained from eating. No, I mean from the word of Yah that you've learned, learned from reading. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So idolatry. Witchcraft, disobedience is even as witchcraft. Well, I don't play with magic. I don't get the community Kincaid. I don't go in there and do no hypnotizing folks. Yeah, 
all that disobedience, I'm excuse, all that witchcraft, but if you are disobedient to Yah's word, if you're disobedient to Yah, you're in the same boat and you deserve the same punishment. Because disobedience or rebellious, as Samuel told Saul, is as the sin of witchcraft. So disobedience is, as well. Hatred. Various emulations. You know, emulations. Let's look on in, 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 on the screen. Emulation is a Greek word, zelios, right? Properly heat that is figurative zeal, to have some zeal, uh, or, or jealousy, malice. I think it's mean that. It means jealousy for you all who don't understand. Song of Solomon said that jealousy is what? Cruel as the grave. Jealousy, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, also, excuse me, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things will not, excuse me, should not, shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Why? Because we know better. See, these things right here that Paul is talking about in describing is not necessarily done out of ignorance. You know you shouldn't be envying nobody. You know you shouldn't be murdering nobody. See, this right here is the same thing that Adam did. This right here is all intentional. These things are done outside of faith. Faith causes us to be obedient, to walk in the righteousness of Yah, to do Yah's word. For so long, we've heard the word faith, and we got it misconstrued. We have an understanding that faith is you believe in Yah for something. So I believe y'all going to give me the promise. I believe he's going to give me, you know, the car. I believe he's going to give me the marriage. I believe he's going to help me to excel right here. So we want y'all to give us a reward of something for our obedience. I believe y'all is going to give me this. But guess what? Faith also is, it, it, it also takes faith to love somebody. Right. Yeah. It takes faith to have joy. You know, people say, well, you know, I battle with you know, depression as a believer. Well, let me tell you, I'm not, I'm not knocking you. A lot of folks battle with depression as a believer. But the, the, the battle of depression is a demon trying to attack you to make you not walk in faith. Because you can't have joy in Yah and be depressed. And the adversary knows that the joy of Yahuwah is your strength. But if he gets you to wallow in your pity party and wallow about what you have going on, then you cannot have faith. I'm not trying to knock you. I'm telling you the truth. If this offends you, then so be it. Because it's not faith to be depressed. And I'm telling you the truth. I've been depressed as a believer, as a preacher, especially when I first started pastoring. I ain't had no faith like I needed to as a pastor when I first started. I used to cry to y'all, bring them y'all from the north, from the south, from the east, then the west. Bring them the white, the yellow, the black, the brown. Do it y'all. And the more I prayed that prayer, the less people showed up. The more they walked out, the more discouraged I got. Because I thought it was in the crowd, in the numbers. Who coming? Who going to give us the money to pay this note to this building y'all? Guess what? And every single time I walked in pity parties, was depressed, and outside of faith, we always lost. Folks never came, and they all, we, we, we never kept nothing. And, and rightfully so. Because without faith, it's impossible to please y'all. So, so we gotta, if, if, if we want to say we're the seed of Abraham, Abraham, the word says, the word says in Romans 4th chapter, let's go to Romans 4. Go go uh, go to um, Romans four and nineteen and read it loud. 
And being now weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And being not what? Weak in faith. And being not weak in his faith. Because he was not weak in his faith, he did what? Consider not his own body. He considered not his own body. Now, now what? Dead. Dead. His own body was what? Dead. 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 He stopped considering his body being dead. Right. He, he stopped considering what he was going through. He stopped considering how he felt. He stopped considering the tree being look good pinch to the pinch of the eyes. He stopped considering the tree made him wise. Mm -hmm. He stopped considering the tree was good for food. He didn't consider how things look, mm -hmm. how things felt. Neither yet the dead is a Sarah's womb. Right? Right. So you can't have faith in stagger. If you're going to have faith in y'all, whoo, you can't consider what's going on around you. Hallelujah. 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 What's the next verse say? He staggered not at the promise of Yah. Whoa, wait a minute. He did what? Staggered, staggered not. not. He staggered not at the promise of Yah through what? Unbelief. Unbelief, a lack of faith. He staggered not at the promise of Yah through unbelief, but was what? Strong, Strong in faith. faith. Strong in faith. Giving esteem to who? Yeah. Guess what, children? We got to have the same kind of mindset. We can't be considered, oh, y'all see fine. She keep coming on to me, y'all. You know I got a witness with women. Oh, yeah, you know I got a witness with men. I know I'm married, y'all. But she got a nice dairy air on her. Her face pretty. She keep talking to me. Telling me how good I look. Mm, I see smell good. No, nah, we ain't going to consider that. We're going to walk in faith. Oh, yeah, I know that, I, that, that I, I, I don't supposed to have sex before I get married. He my boyfriend, and I do love him. And he said, if I love him, I got to prove it to him and go and give myself to him. Go on, go on, go on, get up. No! He ain't the one. We got to let him walk away. Either he bashes. Break up old stuff. Say things that ain't true. We can't fornicate. We got to have faith. Don't allow peer pressure to get the best of us. Because my friends talk about it at school. High school, college. I'm a grown man. I knew a woman who, who said she was in her 40s before she ever had sex. With her husband. That's virtuous. Praise y'all for something like that. That she had the strength not to give in to the, to the peer pressure. I saw a girl last week was, was, was giving y'all extreme when she was dancing because she was 21 years old. And I ain't never had sex. I want to dance through the splits with her. Praise y'all. I got a friend of mine that I've been knowing for a long time was 28 years old before he ever got married and never had sex. Never fornicated. Yeah. So you can do it. Yeah. See, the adversary wants you to think you can't do it. Yeah. He wants you to look at it from the, your own eyesight. Man, I can't do it. Man, I know you can do it. You can do all things to Hamashiach yeah. that gives you the strength if you lean upon him. Right. right? So Abraham didn't consider what was going on around him. He wasn't weak in his faith. But it, it, it said he staggered not at the promise of Yah. The what? The promise of Yah. That means that Yah spoke to him. Yah told him, oh, hallelujah. Yah told him something. I'm getting excited because I hear Yah, he's speaking to me too. He, 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 he spoke to him. He said, you know what? You're going to have a son named through Sarah. His name is going to be Isaac. Abraham held on to that word that was spoken to him from Yah. And the Most High may have promised you all something. He told you something. You have to hold on to that word even if it looks like you're going to lose all of it. If it ain't going to work out. If it ain't going to come. We can't allow the adversary to get in our minds to make us have pity parties and not trust y'all. Listen to me, y'all. Doing the opposite of what y'all says is a sin. Intentional. It's intentional sin. It'll cause your life. 
It don't just cause your life. It causes the lives of others. We can't continue to say we love Yah and say we love our fellow man, our brother, but at the same time, do wrong toward one another. We lie. We love Yah. We got to walk in obedience to his word. We can't walk in this obedience to Yah's word. Praise Yah. So verse 20, 21, and I'm going to go back to God. Uh, then we go to Colossians. Verse 20, excuse me, and, uh, and 21, uh, uh, read, read, read with some zeal. Read, read, hallelujah. And Romans. Uh, Romans 4, 20, yes. He staggered not at the promise of Yah through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving esteem to Yah, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to He was perform. fully persuaded. He was convinced. I know they're laughing at me. I know I ain't trust Sarah I don't know how many years. And I know that Sarah, when, when the Most High first called me, Sarah's womb was dead. And we had to understand she could never get pregnant. And even if my time passed, we brought in, you know, Hagar. In, in my disobedience, I told Sarah about what y'all said. She said, bring Hagar in. I even called Sarah to jump on Hagar. She brought beat her. Hagar took off her. I remember them at that time. She took off running from the house after Sarah beat her up. And she was hiding herself in the Malak, the Malak found her, sent her back, told her she was pregnant. I remember that. But this time, I'm not going to allow my wife, my spouse, or anyone to talk me out of the promise of y'all. I know it looks rough. I know it looks as if we're going to lose something. I know it looks as if it ain't going to work out for us. But we're going to just this time put our hope on y'all. Yeah. And we're not going to be ashamed. <clears throat> we, gotta, we, we can't consider what we're dealing with. We can't consider what we're going through. We can't consider of, 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 of how it feels, but we, we cannot stagger at the word, at the promise of Yah that produces faith. We cannot stagger at the promise of Yah. Y'all saw the lesson. We saw the lesson of Abraham. Y'all saw Abraham that when Yah spoke to him, he laid, he fell on his face and face and laughed. We have to learn that lesson that when Yah speaks to us, no matter how ridiculous it sounds, no matter how, how, how funny it sounds, how crazy it sounds, we are not going to laugh in the face of Yah, and we are not going to allow the adversary to laugh in our face. But we're going to stand up with some gumption, with some zeal, and we're going to walk by faith and, 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 and not by sight, and we're going to trust Yah, because I know that my obedience to Yah is going to cause your life to be blessed as well, according to Verse 22, it says, and therefore it was imputed to him. What? For who? Righteous. Righteousness. And not for his sake alone, but for us also. Hallelujah. Okay. If we believe on Yah, who raised up Yahushua, our master from the dead. Praise Yah for his compassion, ain't it? Yeah, that's real now. See, the works of the flesh, y'all. You be hearing folks in there talking about, man, you can't be fornicating. Uh, you know, giving them deep sermons. <laughs> but man, what about what 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 about you, Pastor? <laughs> Envy somebody because their church is bigger than yours. Oh, they are seemingly like growing bigger than yours or whatever. We envy one another. That's horrible. From my understanding, if I'm a pastor. And you a pastor, and we serve y'all, we brothers. We on the same team. We should be friends. We got the same responsibility. We should give one another wisdom. Let our iron sharpen each other. Unless you're a piece of cotton <laughs> or a sponge, <laughs> then you deserve to be cut. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's go to Colossians. Hallelujah. Praise Yah for some passion. Chapter number, chapter number three. We're going to begin at verse one. If you then be risen with Mashiach, seek those things which are above. If you then be risen with Mashiach, do what? Seek those things which are above. Go ahead. Where Mashiach sitteth on the right hand of okay, God. Okay, now, this scripture at one point in time was, was taught like this. <laughs> If you didn't be rich with Mashiach, seek those things that are above means seek to go to heaven. No, that's not what that means. If you didn't be risen 
with Mashiach. Seek those things which are above where, where Mashiach sitteth on the power or the high revival of Yah. He sought to live a life of righteousness. That's come from above. A life of faith, temperance, meekness. Just those things come from above. Obedience, being set apart. That's what Paul is talking about. He ain't about you going to heaven. He is talking about you ridding yourself of those fleshly desires and live by the Ruach. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits, where Messiah sits. Where does he sit? He sits in the power of Yah. And if we sit with him, we are able to walk in those ways. We don't set our things. We don't set our affections on the things of this earth. Go ahead and read, uh, starting at verse um, 2. Hallelujah. Say your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Mashiach and Yah. You are dead. Dead to what? Sin. Yeah. Your sin. Your old nature. How? Because he died your death. Mm -hmm. Didn't do what you did. So now hide your life in him. And live by him. Since he is our life. For you are dead, and your life is here in, with, 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 with Mashiach in Yah, when Hamashiach, who is our what? Sacrifice. Our life. Sacrifice. Shall appear. And because we're hidden in with him, when he shows up, then shall ye also appear with him in esteem. When he appears, when he shows up in you, Then you can show up because you're hidden in him. You ain't getting no esteem. You ain't getting no, no glory. He is. So then, therefore, what you got to do? Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. Mortify, therefore. What's the word mortify mean? It means to subdue, to kill, to deaden. So he's saying, kill. Don't show no love toward it. Mortify, therefore, the, your members which are on earth. What member? Fornication. Kill fornication. We don't fornicate. See, the answer is trying to make things so hard. And I know he does. It's been a long time. It's been a few years. But I used to struggle with pornography. While married. And I always gave up the excuse. And it was hard. But it, it, no it wasn't. It was just me. Because I found in the word. It says when you are tempted. Temptation is when every man is drawn away. And enticed. By the bait of his own lust. So I watched pornography. Not because Flip Wilson gave me a good excuse. Because I wanted to. When I found out that, and I realized it was wrong, and I knew that y'all wasn't pleased with me doing that, and I was out of excuse, I wanted to love, I wanted to be in y'all's will more. I want to be close to y'all more. I want to inherit the kingdom of y'all more. So I made a decision not fornicate, excuse me, not watch pornography. I committed adultery because even if I didn't do anything physical to someone, I saw a woman on the, the, the computer screen. I wanted to be done what she was doing to uh to that man. That's adultery. And you can't be like that living in the kingdom of Yah, seeking Yah's kingdom. You got to have faith in Yah. I'm going to stop doing this. This is not right. So I kill that. Mm. So we kill fornication. Right. We kill uncleanliness. We 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 we're deadened, mortified. We kill it. In order, inordinate affection. I wonder what that is. Lustful passions. Lust after other women. Lust after other men. Lust after other things. Lust after the same sex. We kill that evil concupiscence. 
What does that mean? Concupiscence. Concupiscence. The longing, the desire to have something that you don't need to be having. Thinning it for it. And coveting is part of the ten words, ain't it? Which is idolatry. Covetousness, fraudulency, extortion, greediness, variance. You want somebody else's stuff. Which is idolatry. For things, for, for which things sake, the wrath of Yah come on the children of disobedience. So let me, let me tell you something. If you're doing this and you say you love Yah, well, I'm going to help you understand something. You don't love Yah. You're disobedient. His words, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. I'm not saying, I'm, I, I, I'm not getting on to those who are working toward getting delivered, who are seeking Yah and striving hard to be set free because many are. You have grace on your life because you're learning, you're growing, you're coming out of. But when you know better and still choose to do wrong, may y'all judge you swiftly because you're disobedient and you have no remorse for what you do. And it's wrong to be like that. All of us need to walk in righteousness. You know, some of you men, you know, being your wife, or even some of you women, hitting, hitting uh, your husband. What at that time when you hit him, you know, um, you kill him. You know, praise y'all for his mercy on me, you know, for not killing my wife or killing my family. I ain't never beat up my hands. I have been aggressive. I could have pushed you down the wrong way then. See, we got to be able to think about certain things. But at times we do stuff that we should not do because it's all about us. If we're going to walk in the ways of Yah, we got to walk by the rule walk. We can't be continue to give in to our flesh because pride could want to prove a point. How about letting Yah work the matter out? How about allowing Yah to have it and judge it by us praying, humbling ourselves, and Him teaching us how to live right? Because certain things that we do, we can't get back no more. Certain things are not restored. Sometimes you lose on that first time. I remember hearing about a girl who was 13 years old, who was a virgin, who had who, who messed around and got deceived and, 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 and molested, I say, and had sex. And guess what? She got HIV the first time. You know, that's horrible. But that's, that, but that's a consequence of sin. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they died the first time. They lost the first time. Why would you put yourself in that spot to take that opportunity, or excuse me, they the opportunity, to take that foolish chance to be ruined the first time. Because you can't get past you. Because your pride in the way. And you want everybody else, everybody else doing it. That means you got to do it. Straight is the way. Mm. And narrow is the road that leads to life. Broad is the way. And wide is the path that leads to destruction. I would rather not do what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Mm. Praise, praise y'all. Because the wrath of Yah comes on the children of disobedience. In time past, you also walked some time when you lived in them. But now you also put off all these. Uh-oh, anger. There it is. Help me, help me on my Yahuwah. Because you know what the Bible says? You know, we can be angry and sin not. Read it in the context. If you do get angry, don't sin. But you still need to work off putting off anger. Where it says in Proverbs, the, the man that's quick to anger, Getting mad quick to anger is slow of understanding. I don't have understanding. Oh, man. That, that's an eye-opener. You get mad quick, real easy. You don't have understanding. It don't matter how you feel about that. It don't matter if you're mad at me. Don't shoot the messenger. Go read Proverbs 14 for yourself then. Matter of fact, I'll read it for you. Proverbs 14, 29. So we can do it uh, 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 really the right way. So you can have understanding of what I've said. Proverbs 14, 29 says this. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. That's why I said when you get mad real quick, you don't have understanding. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is hasty of spirit 
and exalted folly. It's time for us and you all to stop living a backwards life. It's time for us to really seek the kingdom of y'all and ask y'all to help us to live for him. Because we, we do. We, we need to live for him. And you know, to live forever, to have eternal life. Eternal life is not living, going to heaven forever. Hmm. Eternal life is knowing y'all and living with him forever. Even if you're on this earth forever, you, there is a thing called the resurrection. Hmm. Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection. But you will not be a part of the first resurrection Resurrection if you live in own purpose in sin. Now you got to live right. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead to Galatians and Colossians so we can go back to, to, to teaching y'all. Got to bring that out for, for the naysayers. You know, who don't believe what I just said is the truth. You know, um, what's we at? Verse 9. Verse 9, Colossians 3, verse eight. Colossians 3 and 8. It says this, but now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Blasphemy, you all, is a high-handed sin. It's sinning intentionally. Y'all never heard of uh, well, everybody, everybody, want, everybody want to say, you know, uh, with, with blaspheming, blaspheming the rule of dish or blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me tell you what blaspheming the Holy Spirit is. For those of you who all don't know, it's acting presumptuously. It's despising the word of Yah. It's speaking out against Yah's word or going against Yah's word on purpose, doing wrong and knowing better. The man, i.e., that was gathering sticks on the Shabbat, he blasphemed Yah. When we do wrong, fornication, people say, well, because a lot of these pastors, when I was a kid, now my, my pastor, even in the so-called word church, could never explain to me this scripture. You know why he didn't want to explain it to me? Because he, he was an adulterer. And the other one was a lazy man who left in the middle of the night. They were both blaspheming Yah out of ignorance, I, I, might I add. Praise Yah for his compassion. Because they don't know better. But guess what? They could never tell me that as I knew they was ignorant. We can't do wrong on purpose and expect to just keep getting away with it. No. You know, eventually, the man or, or the woman that keep taking pills, they're going to OD one day. The man or the woman that keep taking heroin, you're going to OD one day. You think you can get away with it only for so long. You better understand, you do reap what you sow. It does come back on you. And your ignorance is not going to always be an excuse. How should we walk as the children of Yah? By faith. By obedience. Of course we need help. Y'all, please help us. Show us how to walk and live a set apart life. Teach us how to be who you call us to be. Give us power over the adversary. Let your word be true to my life. You know, we, we, you know why we're not seeing the miracles, the wonders we all so-called say, why we ain't seeing it? We want to blame everybody else, but it's us. No faith. No faith. No obedience. No, because we, because we want to see the, the, the legs open, uh, 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 grow. We want to see them stand up. We want to see the eyes open, but we don't love each other. We don't walk in righteousness. We don't talk to each other. We do everything contrary. We want to see the miracles. A woman can submit to her husband. The husband don't want to honor his wife. We want to eat unclean foods. We don't care about the pastor. We don't love our brethren. We, 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 want, to, we want to give our tithe. Every time the word of y'all comes to us from somebody giving us the word, we get mad. You know, it's, it's funny of how many folks call me crazy, but it's, what, what's even funny is everybody's name I done called out and put you on glass, you have never called me or inboxed me. But you can't say the same about me towards y'all. Because I have talked to you about this here and tried to get it right. Yes, sir. You know why? Because we walk in the flesh. And we don't want to humble ourselves before we are and say, you know what, y'all? I just messed up. No, we want to be like Adam and blame y'all. The woman you gave me. 
the, the woman you gave me. She made me do that. Well, woman, well, the serpent get, got me. No, we gotta have a heart of David. We know we're wrong. And we'll be exposed. And when he ought to be killed, you know, when we do that. And then when the most I said, now it's you who I'm talking about. You. Do we gotta be like David? Have mercy on me, O Yahuwah, according to because he shows mercy. Mm -hmm. He shows love and kindness. He's slow to wrath. He's quick to have mercy. Have mercy on me, Yahuwah, according to your loving kindness. Please blot out my transgressions. Please perish me. Please, you know, clean me with his. Please make me white as snow. Please, y'all, don't take your rule of this from me. We need to be crying out like that. Hallelujah. Walk the way we should walk. Let y'all make us into who he called us to be. We got so much stuff on us, you all. We need y'all to help us. We need y'all to show us the right ways to walk, to live a set-apart life as he's called us to live. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. He said, lie not, lie not one to another. Seeing as you have put off the old man with his deeds. I can't lie to you. No. Because if I lie to you, I got the same thing on me. So you know what? You might have to just get it, but I got to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So you're renewed in the knowledge after the image of Yah <laughs> that created you. So you're renewed. So now you can walk by faith and not by the flesh. You can walk like a Yahushua walked and not like Adam walked. Hallelujah. Remember we just read Romans 5, 19 last week. By one man's disobedience, many were made what? Because Adam had no faith. He, did, he, he walked in, 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 in the flesh and his called a mindset. He received the spirit of fear. We're all born in what? Sin. Yeah. But we walk in Hamashiach because of his obedience, we all have life. We can do, do what now? Walk by what? The Ruach, walk by faith. Mashiach did well in John 3 when he was talking to Nicodemus and telling about Moshe, lifting the serpent up. He's doing number 21. You got to have faith. It's always been about faith. It's always been about faith. Faith is your active, obedient response to the word of Yah. Are you going to obey Yah's word or are you going to obey your own emotions, your own feelings, how you feel what you think? Or are you going to obey Yah? I'm just asking. It's your decision. So we put on a new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision, Torah, or uncircumcision, Torah less, people who don't, Gentiles, barbarian or Scythian, bond nor free, but Mashiach is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of Yah, set apart and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind meekness and long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Mashiach forgave you so also do ye praise Yah Hallelujah. we just feel this verse and we're going to end it on now and above all things put on love charity love which is the bound of perfectness being made whole so I want to let y'all see this completeness whole. In the Greek, in the Greek is uh, teleoses, but in the Hebrew it's called tau mean. I mean, be made whole, complete. And let the shalom of Yah rule your heart. To the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. That the what shalom of Yah rule your heart. You know how you know how Yah Shalom rule your heart? Because you keep your mind stable. Your mind on Him, so you're walking in obedience. Mm -hmm. Because you walk disobedient, you're gonna have Yah's wrath at you. So just let, let the Shalom of Yah rule your heart. To the which also you are called in one body, 
and be ye thankful. Let the word of Mashiach dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with Hesed, grace, in your hearts to Yahuwah, to the Master. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the authority of the Master Yahusha, giving thanks to Yah. Oh, excuse me. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Master Yahusha, giving thanks to Elohim and the Father by him. So again, my question again today is, how should we walk as the sons of Yah? Should we walk by faith or by flesh? By faith or your corner mind? Say, by faith or fear? By faith or disobedience? Because faith means you obey Yah. Yes, the Most High understands that all of us have come from some walk of life. And all of us have learned different things as we grew up. Some of us learned things from other religions, other, 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 other stuff. Some of us have backwards learning. But one thing we all have to our advantage is the desire to be in his will, the desire to want to be close to him, the desire to walk in righteousness. And with that, he takes you as you are. You can't straighten it up and then come. You can't get yourself together and then come. It's just like in the old days, folks when I get me a suit, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't get no suit and then come on this. You might want to come like you are. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one who's going to straighten you up. He's the one who's going to help you be who you got to be. You're ignorant of a whole lot of things, as am I, as other folks are as well. We're all ignorant of a whole lot of stuff. Like y'all said in Numbers 15, those who sin in that burden or by mistake, there's grace. It's those who act presumptuous and despise y'all's word and the judgment come on. So now listen, if you if, if you don't know no better, you just don't know no better. Just begin to learn. But what you have learned and you know that's wrong, do better in those areas as you learn. And let Yah strengthen you with his real cockle dish, convict you of the sin, and lead you and get you into all truth so that you can please him. Amen. So let's walk by faith and not by sight. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahuwah, we thank you for your compassion and your loving kindness and your mercy. Thank you for your strength and your truth, Almighty Yahuwah. We ask you to give us, continue to give us wisdom. Please forgive us, all of us, for walking in disobedience, for walking in sin outside of faith. For walking in our corner mindset at times when we know we shouldn't. Help none of us blaspheme you by going against your word. Help all of us to learn and not remain ignorant. When we turn to you all, my Yahuwah, and we're asking you in the name of Yahushua, give us wisdom and give us understanding. Help us to walk by faith, by the Ruach, by your spirit, and not by sight. Help us not walk in the, in the, in the corner mindset of the flesh. Help us not fulfill those things of the flesh, but show us how to fulfill the things of the spirit, all my Yahuwah. Continue to enlighten our understanding. Give us your word and feed us so we can live. We thank you. We just love you. And we magnify you. I ask you to touch those who are bereaved, the bereaved families, those who have lost loved ones, Almighty Yahuwah. Touch them and give them strength. Help them to be able to cope in this situation and speak to your people and give them the truth, even in these difficult times, those who are going through things, those who are seeking their bodies. I know this new COVID variant is out. I pray for your protection over your people, bring healing, and, and give us strength. Help us to continue to walk in righteousness. I pray, Almighty Yahuwah, that you would teach us how to love one another and love you above all things and grow in our faith toward you. For you truly are indeed our strength. You are our Father. And we ask you to reveal yourself to us. Help us to know you and not live contrary to your word. But show us who you are as a good, good Father. And help us have a true understanding of you. We thank you for your Torah. We love it. We embrace it. We eat it. We love you. We love your Torah, Almighty Yahuwah. We do believe in Yahushua as our Messiah who gave his life on our behalf. And you raised him up three days later as you had promised him. And we thank you all, my Yahuwah, for the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. That now because of your Ruach HaKodesh, we can be led and guided into all truth. We can grow. We have gifts that you've given us in the spirit to live the right ways. We thank you all, Almighty, for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your compassion and your strength. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name, we love you. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Amen. Hallelujah. So do we have any announcements? So we have no announcements. I pray that you all was blessed. Listen, take heed to the word. We all got to grow. Man, we all have to grow. You know, no, I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite. And I know that you all don't want to be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and so, you know, and the best way not to be a hypocrite is to really work on what we got to work on. You know, let, let's not put our focus on, you know, things. You know, what we're going to wear, how we're going to eat, what we're going to eat or drink or clothes. But let's just seek the kingdom of God, put our focus on him so he can continue to show us us. So we can have true deliverance in our life. We love you all. Praise Yah. Shalom. Shalom.